So I recently designed an item frame floor selecting realistic elevator in Minecraft and in this video I'm going to show you how to build it for yourself. The interface for this elevator is actually pretty simple. Basically you can just turn this arrow in the item frame to select what floor you want. For example here we have the second floor selected or the first one that the elevator will go to. When it's in the default rotation in the item frame is selecting floor 1 and meaning it doesn't really do anything. If you turn it once it will go to the second floor which is up there. You can continue to turn it and it will then go to the third floor. And currently it is uh, working for six floors. You could add a seventh floor onto it if you wished because of the signal output from the item frame. But currently we only have six floors here, but you, you could if you wanted to. We can continue to turn this and we'll see that it goes to the fourth floor. You can actually turn this pretty fast as well. There's not like a limit to how fast you turn it. Basically the final two rotations here before you go back to like just rotation zero or I guess it would be select floor one. Uh, they both work for the seventh floor. You turn it again and it just resets itself. So let's say we want to go to the first floor. We turn that one time, it'll select the second floor because this is the first floor that the elevator goes to, but in the actual building, it's the second floor. It's slightly confusing, but you click that to lock the floor that you want, and you just rotate this back to just completely reset it, and you'll see that this light remains on. And if we click that, that's going to activate the actual elevator, and we'll get sent up here. As you can see, we arrived up here. You can right-click that note block, and that will send the elevator back down because that clears the locking mechanism over there it's like a logic circuit and stuff like that it clears that and allows it to go back down if we want to come back up we can flip that lever and then it'll arrive back at the same floor that you just uh whichever floor you called it from you can flick it again and it'll go back down to floor one i guess and so let's go to the very top floor so we're going to rotate this all the way around until we get to there that'll work for the seventh floor or the sixth floor that the elevator actually goes to you can see all the way up there that that piston is extended meaning that, that floor is selected so if we lock that we can rotate that and this lamp will stay on but everything else will reset that'll remain like that and we can flick this and we can begin our journey to the top floor As you can see, we're at the very top of our elevator here for what we've built, and we can click that and it will send it back down, although it takes a little bit longer for the signal to arrive up here because we're at the very top floor. That's going to go all the way back down to the very bottom. And there it is, back at the bottom, so if we want to call it, we can flick this and that will call it, and it will send it back up to the floor that we're on. As you can see, it's about to make it to our floor, and once it gets here, we can flick this lever again, and it will return it back to the bottom floor. Currently, I have three out of the six floors hooked up completely for the elevator. I don't really need the other three hooked up for the purpose of this video. You can send the elevator to any of the floors, however, you can't actually have it return down or get called back up from any, like this floor, this floor, this floor. I have the second floor hooked up, the third floor, and then the seventh floor hooked up. And it looks like our elevator made it all the way back to the bottom. So that's how the elevator works. I'll probably just show you how to hook up one floor because they're all basically the same to hook up. Like there's nothing that really changes except for just like some positioning here, like in these areas with the lines of redstone, but that's all easy. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing I will say about the bottom part here is it looks extremely complicated and convoluted and that's because it is extremely convoluted. However, the majority of these redstone lines that you see here are literally just going into this lamp wall on the inside. That's literally what most of these like crisscrossing lines are for because it was a little bit awkward connecting that up. So that's where most of the, uh, the difficulty and confusion comes from in this thing. The rest of it is actually relatively straightforward. It becomes slightly annoying here because you have to keep six different redstone lines separate for like every single floor. So 
it's it's slightly awkward but it's not as bad as it looks okay we're gonna start with two building blocks that you just want to use for whatever like you're building out of like decoration wise it doesn't really matter here we're just using dark oak planks because that's what i had over there like i said it could be whatever you feel like you're gonna place two note blocks on top of that and you're gonna place an item frame there and you're gonna get an arrow we're just gonna use a spectral arrow because it looks cool but you don't actually have to use an arrow or a spectral arrow you can use whatever you want but I find the arrow to be easiest to just look at and tell what rotation it's at. You're going to place a comparator back here and you're going to place a block of iron at the back of the comparator. Or just some block. It doesn't matter. This is just our redstone building block. We could be using stone bricks as well or dirt or cobblestone depending on how cursed you want to be. But we're just going to use iron blocks. You could easily use something else as long as it's solid blocks. Now out of the back of this block you're going to lay down the seven pieces of redstone and... You're going to go out one block from this, place two repeaters on that side, and you're going to place two repeaters on that side, and two repeaters on that side. And then you're going to have a block in between, place two more repeaters there, two more repeaters there, and two repeaters there as well. The repeater here and here is going to be replaced with a redstone, but you're going to keep this over here the way it was. Now you're going to take two observers, and you're going to place the observers observing those repeaters right there, over here and over here as well and we're going to get our color coding blocks because it makes everything easier you know you don't have to color code but i just think it makes everything easier so right here you're going to place two orange concrete here you're going to place two magenta and here two light blue concrete this is first and second floor or second and third floor technically in terms of actual floors but like uh the first two floors the elevator goes to second two floors third two floors now off the side of this concrete, you're going to place two sticky pistons there, two sticky pistons there on that side, and then two on this side facing downward. You're going to place magenta concrete there, uh, orange concrete, and then light blue concrete on that side. So off the second piston, you're going to place an observer observing that piston. Same here and same over here. We're going to get some magenta concrete, some orange concrete here, and some light blue concrete right there. And then... We're going to place redstone here, redstone here, and redstone here. And you're going to place a repeater facing that way on this side, set to two ticks. You're going to place a repeater here on the facing that direction, two ticks, and repeater there set to two ticks facing in that direction. Now right here, you're going to place just whatever redstone building block you're using. We're using iron blocks here. You're going to place a repeater on it, set to four ticks. And you're going to place two blocks up here and some redstone dust like that. Off of this observer, you're going to place two blocks. You're going to have redstone there, and repeater set to four ticks right there, and you're going to get a block of iron and place that there. And now we have actually the control area for our uh, floor selector. If we rotate that, that's going to go down. If we rotate that again, it's going to put the second one down and retract the first one. If we do that, it's going to retract those. You can kind of see now how this thing actually works. This was the difficult to design, but it does work pretty well. If we rotate that all the way back, then all of them just reset. All right, so now we're going to lay down some of our color coding block. We're going to lay down five blocks. If you like that, you're going to place redstone there, redstone there, and redstone there, and repeaters here. We can actually alternate in some places redstone and redstone dust if there's two lines next to each other, and you can just alternate it so that it doesn't line up, and that way you use fewer repeaters, and it's less expensive to make. Now we're going to go 11 blocks in this direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11 I think. Yep, that's all good. So we can continue alternating our repeaters and our redstone dust until we get to the end here. We actually have to have two repeaters at the end and then redstone dust there because that's the corner. We then have to go four blocks in this direction and one block right here. We can place a repeater there and we can place redstone dust there, redstone dust there, and two repeaters like that. And we can have another of our color coding block right here and you can place a torch on it. This is our very first uh, floor selector area. It's the very first tower of torches. It's also the shortest one. Now we can make a path right next to this of our color coding block. We can have it go like completely uh, completely adjacent to this except it's going to go two additional blocks in this direction before we reach another torch tower. You can place a repeater there, repeater there, and redstone dust there like that. Here we're not going to be alternating the repeaters and the dust because there are things that it could interfere with. It's just easier not to. Although we can actually alternate it right here in this area. That's fine. Uh, you can just have dust, repeater, dust, repeater, dust, and then solid line repeaters, 
dust at the corner. And that is our second uh, floor selector hooked up. Also, future me here, there isn't actually anything to interfere with this area because there's a few redundancies over there that I just removed that were left over from testing. So you are fine to alternate the redstone and the repeaters on this line as well to save resources. So now we're going to start on this side here. So we can go out two blocks like this and then six blocks out total in that direction. And we can place the repeater here, have redstone dust, and then we can start alternating. So we can have repeater, 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 dust, dust, and dust like that. Now if we go five blocks in this direction, we can end up right here. And then we can just add, I guess that would be four more blocks on this and then have our third elevator area. So... We can place a torch up here, we can have a repeater there, and we can continue alternating in this area. We're going to have two repeaters right here, dust, and then we can have two repeaters right here, and then dust like that. So now starting here, we can have five blocks of our color coding. We can have redstone, repeater, redstone, repeater, and then redstone right there. Starting right here, we can go down two blocks, and this is going to have to be replaced with a repeater because that would link up. Did not realize that until now. And we can put uh, another piece of redstone down there, and we can remove the blocks on this side and just fill this in with redstone. Then it's going to go up right here, and then we're going to have a repeater, and then we can just run redstone to connect that and have another color coding. This actually we can replace with magenta concrete so that we actually know it's our color coding. And there, now our magenta line is done. We just have to do the final two things from our light blue area. So from this right here, we're going to go out two blocks, and then out two blocks in this direction. Then we're going to go up for two blocks, and then up again for two blocks. So we can put redstone here and here, and we can then have repeater and redstone. We can run redstone actually just up all of this like that. You don't have need any repeaters there. Now right here, we can go nine blocks in this direction until we get to right here where we can go down a block have a block here have a repeater and then we can put redstone dust here and here and then we can alternate our repeaters and redstone like this make sure you put a torch right here and now we can put another one of these blocks here the final just torch tower and start torch tower you can have a repeater there a block and we can bring this up two blocks and then we can just make this go parallel here until we get to right here and here we're going to go down for two blocks and we're going to have a uh, block of color coding down there we can put our redstone right here then we can have repeater 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 then two redstone there connect this up with redstone and bring that down and now all of our i guess uh floor selectors are hooked up and we have a visitor now we have to build the logic circuits in the back here that are what lock the elevator floor that you select. This was the part that took me the absolute longest to figure out how to make it work, but I got a pretty good design in the end. So from the back of this block, you're gonna take a repeater, you're gonna place another block and then have a torch on it like that. And we're gonna get a dropper right here facing like in this direction. You can have a hopper right there as well. In this hopper, you're gonna place one item. In this case, we're gonna place one piece of glass now you're going to go out two blocks, place just a solid block there, and you're going to place a torch on it. And going into this block, you're going to have a repeater set to two ticks. You're going to place a solid block there, have an observer facing upward on top of it. And if you'll notice, that will quickly depower that torch whenever this receives a signal. Now you can place a comparator coming off of this dropper. You can have two repeaters at the back of it and then two pieces of redstone. Now you can place a solid block here, have a torch. Off the side of it, have a block above it, place another torch up there, and then place in three blocks up here and put redstone on it like that. Now we can go up one block for three blocks and then back down again. We can have redstone on all of this. And this line right here is going to be four blocks long. You can have three pieces of redstone on it and you can place a repeater at the very end. Now we're going to bring this torch tower up two additional blocks. Now you can place a block on the side of that observer. You can go up one block for three and then you can place a block on top of that dropper and you can place redstone there, redstone there, and redstone here, and a repeater in the middle. And what we just built right here is one locking mechanism for one floor. You're gonna have to build this five more times tiled next to each other, one for each of these floors here. You're gonna build it the exact same way and actually you will want to put one redstone 
on that observer now. We're going to just build five more of them tiled next to each other. And when you're done with that, we're going to connect this to one of our outputs here. We're going to connect it to this note block output. All right, we've got all of these done. Now we actually just have to connect them to an output. So you're going to add three more blocks onto here. You're going to place redstone on all of that. And you're going to place a block here. And you're going to get an observer facing in that direction off of that. And we're just going to make this line of blocks go all the way to, uh, I guess, parallel with this note block right here. We're going to go out in this direction two blocks and out in this direction four blocks. And we're going to have an observer right there observing that. And we're going to place redstone on all of these blocks. And right here, uh, parallel with this block, you're going to have an observer observing that direction. And we're going to place redstone right here. And we're going to place redstone out the back here. Now it's actually connected. To make this easier, we're going to have our decorative floor be added now. This is just what I'm using. You can use whatever you want. You're going to have six blocks of it here. And you're going to go for two blocks in this direction, adding four more. And you're going to just make a uh, partial ring of furnaces like this. And you're going to leave that open. And we're going to just start digging out this area. So we're going to dig a hole eight blocks deep. And it's going to be four by five. It's going to be four blocks wide. And it's going to go five out total. So basically, we're going to clear out this area. And then it's going to be an additional row of blocks in that direction. So you're just going to make that eight blocks deep. So we have to have like seven more after this. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll add the flying machine. All right, so we're going to start by filling this in with iron blocks. That's what we're going to be standing on. You can make that whatever you want. It doesn't have to be iron, but just for this, it's going to be iron. So you're going to place four slime blocks underneath that, and you're going to place an extra slime block there. And then you're going to place a sticky piston facing upward underneath that slime, and then an immovable block like obsidian underneath that. Now you're going to take an observer facing straight upward right there. Let's get a torch or something down here. Let's just open that up why not so we can actually see something and now you have to have a sticky piston facing straight downward you have to place a slime block underneath that and then you need to get an observer facing downward underneath that as well and let's see we need to place something up here to stop this because this is actually going to get sent off when i uh update this observer because i have to so basically you're going to place a dropper facing upward underneath that observer. That's going to update the flying machine, so it's going to fly straight up. Let's send it back down by removing that. So now it'll just sit down there. And we can add a block right here and a block right here. We're going to start this stair stepping upward and out because we need to actually have this connected to an input to activate the flying machine. So now we're going to go into the wall here. So we're going to break some of this. We're going to have this sort of go up in a spiral pattern. So just have it end up being like this kind of like really tight staircase. And we're going to place a redstone here in a line like that. So we're going to get a block right here, and we're going to go up and bring this until we get above this block right here. And we're going to have two pieces of redstone there and four repeaters set to four ticks. This is just so we have a delay so that you can actually get onto the elevator before it gets sent off. And we can place redstone here and an observer right there now when we activate that that's going to activate the flying machine so i think a demonstration is in order let's just make this stop so that we uh, don't have it go into the sky now we'll see that that will send off the flying machine and it will just get sent up to here let's return that real fast and work on the next part so what we're going to do now is work on making the first floor stopping like area for the elevator so we're going to add three more blocks onto this. So that would be three more sections. The final torch should be unpowered, and it is. So that means we did it correctly. And also something you should know if you want to put blocks back here is you have to have this area be like immovable objects because there is the extra block that sticks out from the flying machine that has slime. So you have to be really careful with that. So I just arbitrarily selected 10 blocks in between each floor for this one. So we're going to do that here. You could do farther or shorter i guess but you would just have to adjust certain things like the torch towers whenever you're taking an output from a torch tower whenever it's just in standby like whenever this is just completely reset nothing selected you always have to have an output from a torch that's depowered you cannot take a uh, output from a power torch otherwise it will not work so 
six, nine, and then we're going to have a furnace. We don't actually, I don't think we fully need the furnace, but it is helpful just as kind of like a marker. We'll just rotate it. So now that's nine blocks. And then the 10th block is the furnace and we can add our stopping mechanism. So you're going to add two blocks here, two blocks here and a block right there. And we're going to get a sticky piston right here and then a normal piston off to the side. You're going to place the repeater here set to three ticks and we're going to have redstone that connects that. And so if we do that, we have a double piston extender now and we can connect this to that output. So we're going to go two blocks out from this and then we're going to go up one block and bring this over until it is parallel with that. And once it is, you can just connect this to here and we can add our redstone. You can bring it all the way to there. You can place a repeater there and then connect this up. Now we actually have the ability to select a floor. All right, so we're gonna make a border around this thing with furnaces. It's kind of just another, just non-essential to be furnaces. It's just we do want it to be an immovable object. So we're just gonna use furnaces here. We can make this border go around all the way like that. And now from a, if we had a block here, we can go out diagonally one up with the note block and we can go back diagonally with a note block as well. So two note blocks, one for like two different, one for each function, there's two different functions. So you're gonna have a lever on that note block. So we're gonna add an observer mm -hmm. off of this like that. And then we're gonna have two blocks down here and then an extra six off in this direction. And then we're gonna add a block right there. One last orange concrete can go there, we can have a repeater set to two ticks here and we can place some redstone dust on all of that connecting that up so now what we can do is we need to have this get connected down to this line here so that we can reset the uh, locked floor which will return the elevator so the way that this big tower works is I started it from the very top although you do not actually have to and it basically takes a signal strength of 15 from up here and it goes down until at a signal strength of one, which is right here, we have a repeater on that block and it has to go out an extra block from just the two by two tower to accommodate the redstone and that refreshes the signal. So down here, if we take a look at this, this is only uh, about a block above the signal refreshing area for this tower. And if you were to space out the uh, floors differently, then you would have to change the way that this thing like refreshes the signal from the top. In other words, you're just gonna have to add that depending on where your signal strength stops. For here, we're gonna do the same as we did over there, but you'll just have to accommodate the signal strength with repeaters at whatever intervals you need to for your tower. So it's probably going to be different than mine unless you do the exact same like height between the floors, which you do not have to do. So we're going to go up a block like this, and then we're going to go down. Like I said, we're building the exact same thing that we did there. And we're going to have two blocks here. We're going to have redstone on that, and this is going to be a repeater. And we're going to have dust right there. We're going to go down a block here, and then we're going to have two blocks down like this. And then we're just going to continue our normal spiral redstone staircase here. And we're going to have redstone on all of these blocks. So we're actually going to have to remove this block. Then we're going to go down in this direction one block instead. And we're going to put a note block right here underneath that. And we're going to have an observer observing that note block. And so now that is connected to the resetting line for our locking system. So basically, if we were to mm -hmm. click that, this will be sent back downward or it would if I had placed the redstone there, which I did not now, if we click mm. that, that will be sent back down. As you can see, it cleared the lock and it retracted this, which updated the observer and returned it to the ground floor. Now, we need to have a way of calling it back up. So we're going to add another one of these towers and it works the same way as this one. It's like the intervals for refreshing the signal will depend on how much space is in between your floors. So. That will kind of be up to you basically so right here from this note block we're gonna have four blocks in that direction we have two blocks here and a block that goes down and we're going to place a repeater right there and we're going to connect this up with redstone and we're going to put redstone there 
So apparently that connects immediately to a uh, redstone signal refreshing station. And that sounds very complicated. It's literally just a, a repeater. So <laughs> we're going to have a repeater right here. We're going to have redstone and then we're going to go down and then down for two blocks and then continue our spiral staircase down. Normally I'm breaking stuff that should not be broken. We're going to continue this down. Let's just bring this all the way down to the bottom before we add any redstone onto it. So now that it's at the bottom, we can just lay down redstone on all of the remaining blocks and we can have redstone here and a repeater. And so now this lever is not only connected to the stopping mechanism for the elevator for this floor, it's also connected to the activation method for the elevator. In other words, if we flip that, it's going to send the elevator up and it's going to make the elevator stop here because it activated these pistons. And if we retract that, that will update the uh, elevator by retracting that and it will send it back down. It doesn't matter that it fires this down here again because there's not an elevator at the time. Also, it is advisable to light this area up <laughs> with some sort of light source so you don't blow up your redstone with creepers. And you will also want to put one repeater right here instead of redstone. So now this is fully completed and working the way it's supposed to. Luckily though, the way that you build this, it's the same on every floor. The only parts that are different is the length of this area. Basically like this is a few blocks closer, so this is a few blocks shorter. It's best shown over here. You can see that this is like two blocks closer to this, so this is a little bit shorter. And sometimes the, uh, the line here, depending on how it lines up with your like redstone tower going down, it will either look like that or it could look like that. It just depends. This over here, it looks, I think, about the exact same as down there. There's a redstone refreshing station kind of thing. It looks like this may be an older design. I may not have updated this side, so it looks like this is kind of redundant. <laughs> it honestly, like making redstone signals go downward is annoying and difficult. So it's basically going to depend on how many blocks you have in between the floors and all that stuff. Uh, another thing that's different, obviously, is the number of torches in your torch tower going up. This was pretty short. However, like that's going to be twice as twice as tall. That's going to be even taller, and so on and so forth. And you also will need to make sure that you take an output specifically from a depower torch. We don't actually even need this here because it just needs to be from a depower torch. Anyways, that's actually most of the complicated stuff for the elevator. Um, if you wanted to build like another floor onto this, you would go up, I guess, nine blocks from this furnace, which would be here. And then you'd have a, a furnace, uh, I guess right here. And then repeat the same like thing that we, I just showed you how to do. You would build the system again, only you'd have to just connect more of the towers together. You'd have to increase that torch tower down here. You'd have to make it go higher up. But the last thing I'm going to show you about building this today is making that redstone lamp indicator which involves all of the complex convoluted lines of redstone here, which is the annoying part. So if it were easier to keep redstone lines separate, this would be a, like no big deal. However, it is a massive pain. So let's go ahead and may as well get started. So you're going to come over here and we're going to place uh, six redstone lamps and then six target blocks behind those redstone lamps. And we're going to have to add one additional torch onto all of these areas here because you actually take outputs from the torch tower. Just one block higher up than uh, down here. So let's do that. And now we have to get a signal from right here all the way down to there as you can see you can probably tell why it's annoying already so we're gonna have a block right here and we're gonna go down two blocks like that and then we're gonna go down one more time but we're gonna have three blocks then we're gonna go out down again and we're gonna stair step down till we get to there and we're gonna get some redstone and place redstone on all of this like so and we're gonna have uh one piece of redstone down below before we have a repeater and then we're going to lay down a bunch of redstone until I guess one or two blocks after right here. So one and two, you're gonna have a repeater and then just connect this wire up to that target block. So now if we select the first floor that the elevator goes to or the second floor of the building, 
that lamp will turn on. Now for the second area, we have to go one, two, three, one, two, three, like this, place redstone on all of that, and then go eight blocks in this direction. So you're gonna run redstone on the top of all of that as well, although we have to have a repeater right here two blocks before the end. And then we can go down two blocks right here, and then we can go down third block and add another eight onto this. So it's a total of nine blocks long. So five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine. And then we can go down two blocks here, and we can just connect this like that with an additional five blocks, and we can run redstone on that. And I think we need one more repeater somewhere. Yeah, two blocks before the end of this, you're gonna have a repeater facing that direction. And then you can connect this up with redstone. And now, if we flip that, we're going to get the second lamp turning on and the first lamp turning off. So right here, we're going to go out for four blocks like this. And we're going to go up a block here and add two more into that. So we have an L shape and we're going to connect this up with redstone. So now down here, we're going to go down two blocks and then a third block. And we're going to add three more onto that. So it's two and then four. We're going to have a repeater there. And we put redstone on the rest of that. So we're going to go down again here for four blocks. And then we're going to go four blocks in this direction. We're going to go down two blocks right there off the side of that. And then down for one block and connect this up with the redstone. And I don't think we need to repeat it there. Let's find out. Um, I should light up the third lamp. Yes. Okay. So that is working. And those lines are separate. So now let's add the fourth line. So we're going to start by going out three blocks here. And then we're going to go down three blocks and then we're going to go three blocks in this direction and we're going to put redstone on all of this and we're going to put a repeater right there now we're going to go three blocks here and then we're going to go up one block place redstone on all of that and then we're going to go up for one more block and then go nine blocks in this direction with redstone on top of all of that and then we're going to go four blocks in this direction and right here, we're gonna come out two blocks and we're gonna have to connect this up. So we're gonna go down like this and then we can connect that like so. We can place a repeater here and bring redstone down on all of that. And if we flick that again, we should get that lamp turning on and the other one turns off. So there's only two lines left to make and they're slightly less complicated than the magenta lines. <laughs> so this is actually a pretty simple line right here. You're gonna start by adding just four blocks diagonally like this with a redstone on all of them. And then we're gonna go right here with one block and then we're gonna go up. And then we're gonna have 11 blocks in a line here. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. We're gonna go down two blocks like this and then just make this line go all the way out over here so that that connects up just like that. And we're gonna run redstone here on top of this and we'll get a repeater right here before the end. We can bring this down and we're going to have to have one more repeater before we get to the end. I think I don't think that'll reach. I highly doubt it. So place a repeater uh, two blocks from the end. I think that should reach. So now if we flip that, then we should get that. That's not far enough. You're going to have to have a repeater uh, four blocks from the end of this right there. So now we get the fifth lamp lit up. And now we just have one more line to make. So we're going to add two blocks onto this. Then we're going to go down for two blocks and place redstone on this. And then we're going to go down one more block and then add ten more onto that. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to add two blocks here. And we're going to go up and bring this out until we reach this area. And we're going to have to go up one block and then down again so we don't interfere with that. And we're going to run redstone across this. We'll have a repeater one block from the end here. And we can run a redstone line on the rest of this. I don't think we'll need another repeater. I could be wrong. Let's find out. So let's turn that. And no, we do not need a repeater. And as you can see, the sixth lamp is lit. We can flick that again. That would be the, that's like the unused rotation where you could add another floor if you wanted, if there's room. I haven't tried that. I may at some point, but not for this video anyways. That'll reset and then all the lamps will turn off. So that's everything I believe that we're gonna include in this tutorial. Uh, it's just not that hard to make more floors. The most annoying part is just figuring out the darn redstone lines on either side that go down. That's just the most frustrating part. The rest of it is pretty straightforward, not too complicated. Um, 
Yeah, I, maybe there'll be a version 2.0 of this elevator at some point. I would like to include, uh, like, doors that maybe, like, are closed until the elevator arrives at your floor and then they open, like, actually real elevators. I think that'd be cool. I would have to play around and see if there's enough space for that. So maybe we'll have version 2.0 at some point. I don't really know. Anyways, I think that's going to be all for this video. There will be a world download in the description if you want to go check this out or you like you need extra help uh, making more floors, stuff like that. But if you enjoyed, then consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. It really help out the channel. I greatly appreciate it. But that's going to be all for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. I've been Speeve, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Bye.